My name is David Parent, and today I'm going to tell you about how to master the concepts of the EE 101 exam. You might be asking yourself, why do I have to pass this exam? Haven't you tested me enough? Well, there are certain concepts that students struggle with in EE and Compi junior classes that make these follow-on classes hard to pass such as imaginary numbers, transient response, nodal, and mesh analysis. Hey, look like my introduction to circuit analysis topic. I already passed that class. It's true. You already passed that class, and you could have done well. But these EE98 class also covers many subjects that you don't need for, for the junior level. And you can get earn a high grade and still not have mastered all four concepts of imaginary numbers, transient, and nodal, and mesh analysis. To write the prereq to make sure that you were ready on every concept, I'd have to set the prereq for EE98 to an A- minus or better, which is unrealistic. Now, if you pass the 101 exam with an 80%, it means you've mastered the prereq concepts that are needed to succeed in the junior year. Now, why such a high level of mastery? Well, the professors that teach junior level courses on up, they don't review much. They expect you to know the prereq concepts. Also, if you've not mastered the prereq concepts, it can seem like EE 110, for example, takes as much time to master as two courses. You're going to feel lost in class, um, constantly reading the EE98 textbook to find out what you missed. So when you go to do your homework, you look at the problem and you find that you can't follow the conversation of the sample of problem. So you end up having to go reread whatever it was that you didn't master the first time around. Then you can go back and do the homework. Now, I know 80% sounds like a high level of mastery uh, compared to the old way that we did it, but um, not every problem in the online sample bank needs to be mastered for EE 110 and 112 and the uh, Compi classes, like I believe it's Compi 110. So to narrow it down, you should concentrate on problems from basic concepts, applications, DC, AC, transient, and the math. You can just, those numbers are the numbers of the questions that you'll see uh, similar items to on the exam. And I have created an online sample exam that you can take for practice. And I highly suggest that you do uh, take this online and actually answer the questions online to see what your grade is rather than downloading the test and trying to figure out what's going on. Now, it's true the exam has not been changed in a while. Um, at least for a year, the same exam is being used every time, which leads to people thinking that they can memorize and pass. And maybe it was true, all right? Going forward, each semester, new questions will be added, um, but you'll be able to practice them from the sample exam, and it should be through Canvas. The grading scheme has been changed. Before, you need, only needed a 60% to pass, and you'd get four points for every correctly answered question and minus one for every incorrectly answered question. and uh, zero points for leaving it blank. Well, this really led to people trying to figure out the best way to answer the minimum number of questions to pass. From now on, you need to know 20 problems. You need to answer them correctly to pass. But remember, what you need to know for this exam has been reduced. Now, you have to be careful with the online sample exam. You can be looking at it, and I know we're all busy, and you might think you can find a shortcut to knowing what you need to know. 
And for example, if we take DC number one, trying to find the equivalent resistance of the circuit shown here, we can calculate this out to be the sum of R1 plus R2 and R3 and in parallel, which would give us the correct answer is four. Now these numbers here are calculated, all right? And they're from common mistakes from doing this problem. The distractor number one, meaning 11, is just the sum of the resistors. Distractor number two is the product of R2 and R3 summed with R1. Distractor number three is just the product of R2 and R3, and distractor number four is just R3. Now to get nice whole numbers, R2 is a multiple of three, and R3 is twice R2. Well, if I take all these rules into account, the answer will always be the second largest number. And maybe you noticed this. Um, now, yeah, if you went through and figured out what these mistakes were, you really are studying for the exam. But if you're just noticing, hey, the answer seems to be the second largest number, let me try to memorize that. Well, you're doing yourself a disservice. Also, in the new exam, I add random numbers as distractors and I add them randomly. So sometimes it's a calculated distractor, such as the sum of the resistors, and sometimes it's just some random number uh, to push the correct answer somewhere around. Now, there are some things that, because they're not covered in 98, um, that they're not really on the 101 at this moment in time. And they're actually algebra concepts such as factoring and roots of polynomials, dividing polynomials, and a big one, partial fraction expansion. All right. One, these are all algebra. One day the exam will probably cover these just so that when you uh, get in to these classes, uh, you won't have to go back to your Algebra 1 uh, textbook to try to remember how to do these things. Also, uh, the Laplace transform will be added. Now, let's say you pass this exam, and I really hope you do. I really want you to succeed. Um, but it's not a guarantee of success in and of itself. You have to make sure you give yourself enough time to study. Each unit that you take is an approximate time commitment of four hours per week. You don't really have any more general education left if you're in the junior year. It's all technical. It's all EE or compi. And these courses are time intensive. I know that the four-year sample plan requires 15 units a semester, but for most of us, this is too much. If you look at almost any university, all their uh, average graduation rates for engineers is about five years, as, as long as it takes. And it's the same for Berkeley as where I went at UConn, um, NECSU, it's all about the same. We are forced to make up a four-year plan because some people can do it, but um, you've You've really got to be very organized to take 15 units in a semester. Most of us, we can do 12 without any outside commitment. Other things you can do to make sure that you're successful is make sure you have good study partners and go to your professor's office hours. The people who get A's in my class are the ones who come to my office hours and talk to me about things. Um, Trying to learn it all on your own uh, can be very frustrating and take you extra time. But if you have identified what you don't know and need a little bit of help, office hours is a very efficient way to get it. Also, if you have an emergency, do not try to gut it out. Um, we have things such as incompletes or withdrawals and that it's, it's better to work with myself and the instructor to um, make sure that a family emergency, for instance, doesn't, doesn't ruin your grades, all right? You're not alone at San Jose State. I'm here to help. And if you 
get into trouble or you have a family emergency, you can contact me if you're an electrical engineering student. And I can try to work with the system to make sure that you can take care of your family. And then, uh, but you don't pay a huge uh, penalty for your school. And then I know that this exam, it's, it's acts like a gateway, but I want you to know that you do belong at San Jose State University. You were accepted um, it, to transfer into EE and Compi takes a 2.9 GPA and our, to get in to uh, the junior year, you have successfully passed all your classes. So you really do belong here. Um, but I need you to do some things just to make sure that you're successful. And one of that is to make sure you have the underlying concepts that you would get from EE98 and differential equations. So take the 101 exam seriously uh, as a review. And yeah, if you have a question about a uh, anything, you can email me uh, about the 101 exam. All right. Good luck. Not that you need it.